With more performances than any other opera singer in history, Placido Domingo holds a special place in the performing arts. Domingo is not just one of the most recognizable faces after a career that's lasted nearly five decades, he's also a leader and performer with real power. But in the wake of Me Too, there are now a series of revelations by the AP about his alleged personal behavior, allegations that raise disturbing questions about the use of that power. For decades, Placido Domingo has been one of the biggest names in opera. A multi-Grammy Award winner and one of the iconic three tenors, his star power and industry status are beyond compare. The 78-year-old Spaniard currently conducts and directs the Los Angeles Opera, and he still attracts sellout crowds across the globe. But a new Associated Press report out today says that rise to fame was littered with sexual misconduct. The story cites nine women, eight singers and one dancer, who say Domingo harassed them and tried to pressure them into sexual relationships over 30 years, often at venues where he held a managerial position. All but one requested anonymity. Patricia Wolfe sang at the Washington National Opera in the late 1990s and 2000s. Domingo was the artistic director there and later the general director. He would come up to me this close. And he would say, Patricia, do you have to go home tonight? Um, and it, it was arresting. It was uh, very difficult. Wolf said she started hiding from Domingo. I don't know how it could have been shoved under, under the rug as long as it has been. It's gone on long enough. <laughs> It needs to stop. The women's stories followed a pattern. They say Domingo would push for private meetings under the guise of offering professional advice, that Domingo offered them jobs and then sometimes punished professionally those who refused his advances. Seven of the nine said they felt their careers were negatively impacted when they told him no. Three said he forcibly kissed them and one said he put his hand down her skirt. In a statement, Domingo called the allegations, quote, deeply troubling and, as presented, inaccurate. I believe that all of my interactions and relationships were always welcomed and consensual. However, I recognize that the rules and standards by which we are and should be measured against today are very different than they were in the past. When someone comes this close and kind of smiles in a wry smile and says, do you have to go home, I think that was pretty clear. I, there were no misconceptions in my mind. None of the women had documentation of Domingo's actions, such as phone messages. But the AP talked to three dozen singers, dancers, musicians, and others who said they had witnessed Domingo acting in a sexually inappropriate way. Let's further explore the reaction to this news and wider questions about this abuse of power in the field. Peggy McClone has written about this issue extensively for the Washington Post, and she joins me now. Peggy McClone, welcome to the News Hour. Now, the story broke just today, but tell me what has been the broader reaction within the opera and the classical music world? Well, there was swift reaction actually today. The Los Angeles Opera announced a, an outside investigation and then several organizations, the Philadelphia Orchestra and the San Francisco Opera, um, canceled upcoming um, performances with Placido. So there's been some reaction and actions already taken. You know, one of the commonalities I took away from some of the allegations in the Associated Press report was this idea of a whisper network when it came to Placido Domingo, that it was sort of an open secret among women. He was someone to be avoided. You've reported in this space for a while. Is that anything that had ever come up before? Right. That is a common thread that, we, that we've heard. Um, my colleague Anne Majette and I did a big report last year. We talked with more than 50 musicians and th about others, not, not Placido Domingo. But that was a common, uh, a common thing that we heard, that women would, would help each other by um, you know, sharing what they thought with rumors or other you know, firsthand um, experiences. 
don't be alone with him. Don't ride the elevator with him. Don't let him walk you to your car. Have an escape plan. It, it, it was a, a myriad um, examples of, of how to deal with these kinds of people. And one of the allegations is as well that he retaliated against women who refused his advances. Help us understand a little bit about how power is distributed. I mean, Placido Domingo held a number of top managerial positions at a number of organizations. What kind of influence would he exert in those organizations? These top people have control um, for, for reasons like casting, for recommendations, um, especially with young artists who are starting out. And we heard this a lot last year, Ann and I, where um, you wouldn't want to rebuff someone who could give you um, a recommendation or sign you up for an audition or get you um, into the next training program that would be the next step in your career. And, and so part of it was that there, that there were these choices that had to be made that, you, you know, the, these young women, many of them starting out, didn't want to ruin things before they even got going. Peggy, you reported today that Domingo in particular was uh, invested and active in a lot of those young artist training programs. You spoke to a woman who participated in one of those. What did she have to tell you? Yes, yes. So she was not the target of him herself, but she said that it was, um, you know, well known. It's, the, it's that, again, that open secret in the community. You know, you just go about your day knowing that he was going to make unwanted advances or in, in the story she was telling me, have a very open, you know, everybody knows about it, sexual relationship with a young artist. And, and, and no one knew what to do about it. Um, and then she said that that sort of creates a culture where people feel like this behavior is acceptable or there will be no consequences. And then others, maybe people who aren't superstar status, then have the opportunity or take advantage of that to, to do terrible things themselves. And she, she also talked about how the pow that, that power dynamic, who's going to believe a young artist um, over you know, a, a major superstar? And so that's also you know, part of this equation. You mentioned, obviously, L.A. is said they are investigating. Philadelphia has rescinded an invitation for Domingo to perform there in September. But Salzburg, Austria, said that he will still be performing there later in August. Peggy, I want to ask you, because you've written about a number of other people, other high-profile figures in this world who have faced similar allegations. What have you learned from their cases that tells you how these kinds of allegations can be handled in this world? You know, it, it does matter, um, you know, it, and it, it's different organization to organization. Um, last year, the Cleveland Orchestra uh, also investigated with an outside um, company, and they posted their findings on their website. Um, and not only did they um, confirm the allegations that were in our story about William Prussell, but they found another musician who also was accused, and so they fired both of them. But then James Levine sued after he was fired from the Metropolitan Opera last year, a result also of, of similar sexual harassment allegations, and they settled recently, and, and neither side will say, you know, what the agreement was. So, uh, you know, it's hard to say what the aftermath of these, of these things are. Still remains to be seen. Peggy McClone of The Washington Post, thank you so much. Oh, thank you.